Hello everyone, Drew Binsky here from my quarantined apartment in Los Angeles, California. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. Due to popular demand, I've decided to make a third sequel of my scariest travel stories that have happened to me across 191 countries. I must remind you guys of the quick disclaimer that I do not hate these countries. In fact, it's quite the opposite. These stories are based entirely off my own personal travel experiences, AKA being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So with that being said, we head over to the Philippines to hear about the first of three scary travel stories. All right, so six and a half years ago when I was teaching English in South Korea, I took a trip down to the Philippines for my first time in the country. Now I've been there like 50 times and it's my home, but I was traveling with a friend at the time and we were in Sikihor Island. The trip was going great. I fell in love with the Philippines. It's obviously my favorite country in the world as you guys already know. But on the last day in Sikihor, something really scary happened to me. So that night at 8 p.m., we had a flight from Cebu City to Brunei. But to get to Cebu City from Sikihor, it takes all day. And the first step was getting on a three hour boat to another city called Dumaguete. So we show up to the dock at 6 a.m. and they break the bad news that because of the weather currents and the tides, all of the boat ferries were canceled. So obviously we were freaking out. We needed to find a way to get to Dumaguete City. So I made a local friend and I told him we need to find a private boat driver to take us across. So we walked around these little villages and sure enough, there was a fat guy with a cigarette dangling from his lips. And I told him that we need to get across. He told me that he has a boat that can fit six people. And I went to go look at the boat and it was a small little bamboo boat that I had never seen before. And I don't know, it just seemed like the right move to do, so we did it, and then other locals realized they need to get across, so we shoved 10 people on this small boat, no life jackets, and we were off. So the first hour or two was fine, you know, the sea was really calm, the sun was shining, and everything was fine. And then the weather came in, and the wind started to pick up, and it started raining, and this boat is so small that our feet were like dangling in the water. There's a small motor in the back, and I was pivoting left and right as the waves were coming coming over my shoulder. Luckily, I had a waterproof backpack on so my computer and my phone stayed dry, but everything about me was soaking wet as if I just jumped in the ocean. At the beginning, they told us the boat ride would take about four hours and it ended up taking eight, and it was so scary to be out in the middle of the sea. You can't see any land anywhere, and you have these huge waves crashing on us, and literally, if this boat flips over, we're not gonna make it. Uh, we don't have life jackets and we would all be dead. And this is kind of a story that you hear in the news of stupid travelers going out and doing things I shouldn't do. So I do not recommend that at all. If it was today, I would definitely not do it and I would just be happy with my missed flight. But it was crazy, we ended up getting to the other dock and then as we're soaking wet and have salt all over our bodies, we have to get on another boat to Cebu Island and then get on a three hour bus to Cebu City where we arrived 45 minutes before our flight. That was crazy. For the next scary travel story, we head over to Brazzaville in the Republic of Congo, where I was about six months ago. So before I went, one of my travel friends connected me with his local friend there and said, hey, this guy can take you around. And as you guys know, I love to have local friends. They make me feel comfortable, make me feel safe. And 99% of the time, they're good people. Well, this is the 1%. So the local guy in Congo, let's just call him Jeff, he picked me up at the airport in his car and everything was normal and fine and he seemed really cool. Yo, what's up, man? I'm here in Brazzaville, Congo. Congo Con Brazzaville. Yeah, country number one, Congo, Congo, 88. Congo. Dropped me off at my hotel, I checked in and then we were touring all around together and we had been exchanging messages the last few days and he was happy to host me. He said I don't have to pay him. He was happy to show me around to help out a friend and we would get along and we could see all the sights of the city and just have a good day together. And that's really what happened for the first few hours. We're going around, he brought his other local friend who could speak better English because I don't really speak French, unfortunately. So there were three of us in a car and then all of a sudden we were at a restaurant by the river and he looked at me and he basically said where's my tip like kind of with a serious face and I was like what do you mean where's your tip you said you would show me around and by the way I was covering all the gas uh, covering the food and covering any other activities that we did I always do that I want to help out the locals and they help me by showing me around I was buying him beer I was buying him food I'd already paid about 30 or 40 dollars to him which I think was right but he looked at me and he was like where's my tip uh, I need money from you and I was like what are you talking about man I'm not giving you a tip and then he started going crazy on me and I, I kind of backed away. I thought he was joking at first and he was like, I'm taking you around, you owe me money, you thought this was free. I actually recorded our conversation because he was getting so aggressive. It's in French. I bought beers, I bought food, I bought taxis. That's yeah, for everyone. One, no money. Okay. But when I first met you, you said, I don't want your money, we just hang out. 
You said it to me before. But why do I give you money? We're friends. No, most friends. No, 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 no. Most of the money no. So you can see how frustrated I was at the situation with this guy and he kept asking me for money. So then I finally got him to calm down and take me to my hotel. So he took me to my hotel. And then about an hour later, I get a knock on my hotel door. And I open up and it's him by himself. And he's like, give me money. And I shut the door, I locked it. I called the security of the hotel or the lobby. And they sent someone and they got him out. And I told him to put a security guard at the front of the hotel because this guy's crazy. He's literally a lunatic. An hour goes by and I get a call from the front desk that this guy is running around the hotel trying to get into my room and it was just a nightmare. So basically what I had to do is move rooms so the guy didn't know where I was staying. And this is on like the first day I was in Brazzaville. I was there for a few days. So literally the next two or three days, I was so scared just to leave my hotel and go see things in the city. So I would leave at really weird times. I would leave at like 6 a.m., get picked up by a taxi and then go around and tour and then come back. I just had to avoid seeing this guy. It could have turned aggressive if I didn't have my English speaking friend there to be a translator and kind of calm the situation down but he really did seem like a criminal and you got to be careful of these guys and I kind of learned my lesson to not go with locals recommended by this traveler. Alright that leads me into the third and final scary story I'm going to share with you today and it happened in Goa, India. So right after I finished teaching English in South Korea I went to India for three months on a solo backpacking trip. I had long hair, I was on a really tight budget of about $700 per month and my very first stop was Goa. Now, I had thought about going vegetarian in India because it's very easy to go vegetarian there. Half of the restaurants serve veg food and I was told that a lot of the meat could be bad if they're not refrigerated properly or whatever. But I was with a local friend there and she convinced me to eat at the best chicken curry restaurant. So what did I do? I ordered chicken curry. This is like on my second day in India on a three month trip. So I ate the chicken curry and it was incredible. I was loving it, one of the best meals I've had in a long time. And then about three hours later, I found myself in my hotel room with the worst food poisoning I've ever had. There's like food poisoning that I've gotten in Yemen, that I've gotten in Pakistan, in Libya, and then there's food poisoning in India and that was like times 10. Basically, long story short, I was on my hands and knees naked in my hotel room. I was so weak that I couldn't even crawl to the toilet. So I ended up on the floor. Sorry for the visuals guys, but this is just a real life situation. And I think that you're all adults here. Uh, it was coming out of both ends and I finally was able to get to the bathroom and I, then I had to crawl back to the phone because I was by myself. I had to call the lobby and see if they could bring me some medicine. That whole scene that I just described was about three hours. Okay, that's how slow I was able to crawl across. I was sweating, it was like, the most horrible, I just like, you know, was curled over in a ball and I could barely breathe and it was horrible. Like I thought I was dying. I literally thought I was dying. So finally they brought me medicine from the pharmacy and it worked slowly. So the whole day I was pretty much out. The next day I couldn't even get out of bed, but I was feeling a little bit better and I was trying to get some fluids in me. And I don't know, this story could literally happen anywhere. I'm not picking on India, but I just happened to get the worst case of food poisoning in Goa and it knocked out three of my seven days planned in Goa. And even on the fourth day, I was still like really weak. I had lost maybe 15 pounds. I don't think I need to go too much more in detail because I'm sure a lot of you guys have had food poisoning so you know what it's like. But to this day, whenever someone says, where's the worst food poisoning you've ever had? It is absolutely in Goa, India. And I tried to go vegetarian after that for the rest of the trip and I succeeded pretty well. I ate meat a few times, but I kind of learned my lesson from the beginning. All right, so with that, I conclude the third sequel of this Scary Travel Stories video. I'm sure there will be many more because it seems to be a pretty popular series. You guys enjoy hearing me freestyle. Obviously, these are not scripted. I'm just recalling my memories from these countries. I have a lot more to tell you. Hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry for the negative video. It really has nothing to do with the countries. It really is just bad experiences from traveling because these happen a lot. So with that being said, have an awesome day, guys, and I will see you soon. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.